Okay, let's do this again. This is the largest voice for law enforcement in the United States. We have a United States Senator here who wishes to address the audience. So let's give him a largest law enforcement representative voice of America. Good morning. So good morning. I first met this uh, gentleman uh, about five or six years ago when I was first elected. He, his, his camp reached out to me and we had a sit down. I don't know if you remember this, Senator, but we had a sit down outside of the Starbucks on the circle and he just wanted to know what he could do for law enforcement. Since then, he has proven himself time and time again to be a friend of law enforcement. I mentioned yesterday about uh, the governor showing up at uh, line of duty funerals. And like you guys, we've had way too many. And not for a photo op, but because he cares about the families and he cares about the departments and he cares about the men and women that protect us every day. He doesn't show up to speak. In fact, I don't, I've never really known him to ask to speak, but he shows up to show his support. He's one of those guys that he'll be the one calling me when something happens. Not an aide, not an LA, but it's the senator himself will call me and say, hey, it's Todd, what do you need? What can I do for you? He is a, a, a tried and true friend of law enforcement and I'm proud, he's a Marine Corps veteran. Uh, always a Marine, right? So I'd like for you to give him a warm welcome to Senator Todd Young. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity and welcome to the great state of Indiana, a state where we back the blue. You know, as Bill indicated in my introduction, I'm a Marine. It's, it's been said of certain Marines that uncommon valor is a common virtue. That too applies to your profession. So I thank you for your uncommon valor during what is an incredibly challenging time for our nation, but in particular for our law enforcement professionals. Thank you for your service to the American people. Thank you for your service to our states and to our communities. Let me be crystal clear. You put your lives on the line every single day. And the people of this state and an overwhelming majority of Americans stand behind you. I'm grateful to your president, Patrick Yose, and his leadership team for the opportunity to be here. And uh, for, of course, Indiana's own FOP President Bill Owensby and Rick Snyder of Indianapolis Lodge 86 for hosting uh, this incredible convention this year. I understand it's going really well. It's an honor to work with President Yose and his team, especially regarding law enforcement mental health issues. I was proud to be part of a group that introduced the Law Enforcement Mental Health and Wellness Act. That was made law in 2018. And, it's nice of you all to applause, but it's the right thing to do. It's my job. This, uh, this gives, as many of you know, mental health services to, to those who, who need it, to care for your mind as well as your body. This year, I reintroduced the COPS Counseling Act. This would give federal law enforcement officers needed confidentiality as they seek peer counseling. Now, I couldn't do the work that I do without counseling from your leadership and, frankly, from rank-and-file officers that I'll encounter on a near daily basis as I travel the highways and byways of the great Hoosier State. I know it's hard being a police officer these days very hard. I spent a lot of time over the years with our men and women in blue 
And I've seen the stresses of the job intensify over the years. And they've really, frankly, reached a fever pitch over the last year plus. And as much as I'm honored to speak to this esteemed group here today from across this great nation, I've had the difficult job, as so many of you have, of thanking not just the men and women who have heroically survived attacks, but of consoling a falling officer's grieving widow or confused child. Let me say it again. Thank you for your service. Just last month in Indiana, Terre Haute Police Detective and FBI Task Force Officer Gregory Ferency lost his life in a targeted attack that didn't need to happen. We honor his service. We remember his sacrifice and all the fallen officers of the Thin Blue Line that gave their lives to protect ours. There are, of course, bad people in the world who have a complete disregard for the law and for those who seek to enforce it. That's always been the case. And you signed up for the job knowing you would encounter those individuals on a periodic basis, maybe a regular basis. But now, you have a new threat on another front, largely unknown to our generation. And I'm going to tackle it head on. You have organized political opposition willing to openly attack your profession. They do so by calling for defunding the police. They do so by seeking to remove legal protections for officers who are doing their very best. And they seek to drag down an entire group of honorable individuals based on the actions of a few bad apples. That's just not right. Let me be clear. These attacks on your proud profession won't stand we collectively will fight back against attempts to weaken law enforcement agencies. We will not strip law enforcement officers of qualified immunity. And we sure as hell will not defund the police. I know, as all of you do, that no one wants to root out bad cops more than a good cop. I hear it time and again. Good cops serve faithfully and honorably and proudly, and that's what all of you do. I understand you support appropriate and thoughtful and considered reforms to protect law enforcement and to ensure that you have the public's trust. It's critical these reforms be developed in consultation with, in partnership with law enforcement, not as punitive measures against a class of professionals. Now, you know better than I that veteran officers are leaving the force in response to policies that make it nearly impossible for them to do their jobs. We're seeing a rampant disrespect of law enforcement officers who put their lives on the line every single day to protect our communities. Police departments aren't only losing seasoned veterans, they're finding it difficult to recruit new officers. Put simply, wearing the badge should be a position of esteem in our communities. And for most, it still is. But the stigma some seek to affix to that badge most negatively impacts low-income, higher-crime communities across the country, who, like right here in Indianapolis, are seeking dramatic increases in neighborhood crime that demands an immediate response. Yes, of course, we must address the root causes of crime. No one disputes that, but we must also address the immediate public safety needs of our communities, and that need is protection only strong law enforcement can provide. America can't long sustain division over the rule of law. Whatever our party affiliations, teaching our children that law enforcement itself, by its very nature in our society, is somehow racist or illegitimate, will be our undoing. We need to unite around our shared humanities, or we will fall as a house divided. Our forebears of all races and creeds fought to make this a more perfect union under the law. 
And as the founders themselves understood, that work is never, ever done. That, at its core, is the work you get up and do every single day. It's the work that the vast majority of Americans support you doing, making this a more perfect union. Let me say that again. The overwhelming majority of Americans support what you're doing. On that note, I look forward to our continued partnership right here in the state of Indiana and with your national leadership to find solutions and ideas, smart ones, real ones, thoughtful ones, for reforms that will protect public safety, support our law enforcement, and foster trust among our communities. It really has been my honor to address you right here in our capital city today, and I hope you, can, you continue to enjoy this time in Indianapolis. And as you advance your, in your chosen profession, I hope that the people of, of this great country will continue to, to recognize what an essential role you play in our daily lives. Thank you again for your service and Godspeed. Senator, thank you very much for your words, your support, and also for your service to our country.